first of all, I, I would like to, to thank the organizers of this conference uh, for, offering me, for offering me this space. Uh, thank you very much. My presentation is titled uh, Strained or Broken Bonds, the Indian Diaspora in its Diversity in La Réunion at the Turn of the Millennium. Uh, the Indian presence in La Réunion dates back to the time of the settlement of the island. Though some Indian prisoners and some Indian women were deported or imported to La Réunion as early as in the 1670s, uh, actual ingress of Indian slaves took place in the early years of the 18th century. However, the introduction of important groups of workers from the Indian subcontinent happened under the, in, under the indenture system. The first indentured workers came, came in 1828, and the number of imported people raised in the aftermath of the abolition of slavery on the island, that is to say from 1849. And though the contracts they signed stipulated a possible repatriation to the subcontinent after the five-year term, only few workers could actually board the ship back to their homeland. The indenture system was economically profitable to landowners who did not encourage this journey back and who neither made things easy for those who wanted to leave. Repatriation did represent a loss for indentured owners as they had to pay, transport to pay transport charges and then supplementary, supplementary expenses had to be considered as it was necessary to replace these workers through hiring new indentured uh, people, new indentured workers. This system, which was defined as forced wage labor, uh, was essentially based on human exploitation and social mobility was low and workers had to cope with modest living conditions for several generations before they could achieve a form of financial independence. While some of these indentured workers asked for repatriation uh, once their contracts expired, others did not renew them and settled on the island. Some of their descendants eventually became agricultural landowners. Virginie Chaillou-Atrou argues that indentured workers were, I quote, uprooted, made vulnerable and badly considered, and as such, they were doomed to a life of servitude, which in certain respects brought them closer to the status of slaves, end of quote. In such strenuous context and conditions, one might have feared a cultural weakening and an erasure of memory. Historians like uh, Sully Santa Govinda showed that on the contrary, religious and cultural practices were important for early immigrants. Indentured recruiters sometimes made sure that there were bands of artists among the groups sent to the colonies. The idea was to support and encourage cohesion within immigrant groups, a goal that could be achieved through the perpetuation of cultural and religious customs. Moreover, indentured migrants carried their cultures to the remote places where they were sent. Uh, I quote uh, Chayou Atro again, these workers from elsewhere brought with them their beliefs, their language, their forms of music and dance, their culinary practices, end of quote. However, members of the Indian diaspora have had to face many, obstacle to many obstacles to connect with the motherland. First of all, there has been no direct flight to India until 2016, when the local company, uh, Air Austral, inaugurated its non-stop route to Chennai. Before that date, people from La Réunion um, who wanted to travel to India had to transit through Mauritius. And for a long time, the only port of disembarkation was Bombay, uh, before Air Mauritius established a route to Delhi and later to Madras. 
Moreover, there was also the visa formalities. For many decades, travelers had to send their official documents to the Indian High Commission in Mauritius to get their visa to India. Prior to that period, and even until the uh, early 1960s, passports had to be sent to the Consul General in Tananariv, Madagascar, for visa obtention or for renewal in case the holder was an Indian national. Some of those who migrated in the first half of the 20th century had the intention to go back after securing their financial situation. They did not consider settling in La Réunion, and for that reason they did not, they, they did not take the necessary steps to obtain French nationality. So the travel to the motherland was quite demanding, and those who wanted to visit their forefathers' country had to go through long formalities. While enrolling workers, administrative officers often misspelled their names, and Amitav Ghosh gives an example of this in his Ibis trilogy. These names were often changed a second time by French officials when establishing civil status documents. As a result, family names that can be found in La Réunion are often significantly different from those used in India. Moreover, registration records were lost. These factors reduced chances for descendants of indentured workers to trace back the link to their place of origin and to their ancestry in India. Lakpatia and Ho note the existence of an important homogeneity within the indentured population due to recruitment from a unique geographical space, the French trading post in the French trading posts in India. Further research, however, showed that despite their belonging to the same territory, groups of indentured workers presented a significant diversity in terms of culture and religion. Uh, Marimoto clearly indicates the multicultural character of this population, where Christians and Muslims could be found among South Indian or Bengali Hindus. She, however, notes the preponderance of Dravidians within this population. Some members of subgroups became assimilated over generations, and the Muslim identity was, comple was completely erased, for instance. Members of the Hindu community, on the other hand, experienced other forms of assimilation. Some of them embraced Catholicism but continued practicing their cults and rituals. French assimila assimilationist uh, policies also contributed to forms of acculturation. Creole and French became the main languages of communication and the use of Tamil gradually disappeared within families. Newborn were baptized, and therefore they received Western or French first names. To some extent, homogeneity is rather the result of migration and settlement on the island than a characteristic of migrants from the outset. Assimilation was also the only, ip the only option insofar as connections with the country of origin had been severed. Uh, Logambal Suprayan Kaveri, a former president of the Fédération des Associations Tamoules de la Réunion, explains that despite this her historical rupture with the motherland, elders kept transmitting their traditions to new generations. Uh, cultural preservation depended on them to a large extent. Thanks to their efforts, uh, people were able to pray and celebrate their rituals at family temples, but also at community temples that were built all around the island. Prayers were performed in Tamil, and the culture was very much alive. Gilbert Pugna, uh, the leader of the Ziskakan music band, explains the importance of what he calls the Malbar musical environment of his childhood and how this shaped his world and influenced his music. Jean-Claude Carpanin-Marimoutou mentions 
the persistence of the Nargon, uh, in other words, religious plays spef specific to South India, even though local people stopped using Tamil and uh, eventually uh, used Creole or uh, uh, were silent uh, during the play. However, new generations had another type of relationship with their cultural background. It is generally considered that the change of status in 1946 constituted a turning point for many people in La Réunion. The island became a French department in its own right, and greater access to education counted among the many consequences linked to this evolution. Social mobility became possible, and people had other perspectives on their identity and backgrounds. In La Réunion, political and cultural movements enabled reflections on Réunionese identity, and people started to question their past in a more conscious way. Many young educated people and intellectuals alike wanted to assess who they were and what was their place within the national narrative. For many, this was a refusal of assimilation. Among the descendants of indentured workers, a certain vitality resulted in the creation of various associations. The Fédération des Associations Tamoul was founded in the early 1970s, and people like uh, Axel Kishner, for example, were very active in these organizations, and the idea was to structure the community through a variety of cultural events. Courses in Tamil language were organized, as well as song and dance lessons. According to Suprayan Kaveri, younger generations did not just reproduce traditions. They wanted to understand their meanings and make them their own. This wish to reappropriate one's own culture went through the desire to visit the ancestral land. To achieve this goal, it was important to make visa formalities easier, or at, or at least more accessible to people from La Réunion. The Fédération des Associations Tamoul was one of the first actors to work for the installation of an Indian consulate. Other associations joined later. Procedures took time as Indian authorities had to be convinced of the merits of the request. At first, there were talks of an honorary consulate. Uh, Amadou Sen, president of uh, the Association des Musulmans de la Réunion, explains that members of the Hindu community um, initiated the steps for the creation of an Indian consulate. Gujarati Muslim associations came later, and they also supported these initiatives. And when uh, the future consul, Mr. K. H. Patel, came on an, on an exploratory mission in 1985, uh, they were consulted and they took part in the negotiations. The Indian government was not eager to open a consulate in La Réunion. Local associations had to persevere to, had to persevere to convince officials in the motherland of the need to open even uh, an honorary consulate on the island. The French government had given its approval. Besides, La Réunion is the French territory where the largest number of people of Indian origin live. The stakes of this request were crucial because it came at a time when a large part of the Hindu community wished to return to its roots. As said earlier, traditions were kept alive, um, but descendants of indentured workers had an acute sense of being uprooted. The, the anthropologist Christian Gassarian argues that colonial plantation societies led to, I quote, the rapid and clear severing of family ties with, in, with India, uh, end of quote. For the Gujarati community, uh, which settled later on the island, the implementation of a consulate office would signify simpler procedures to visit family members in the home country. 
all in all, despite uh, the Indian government's the Indian government's former uh, reticence, Mr. Patel's mission proved to be successful. He measured the importance of the Indian diaspora and its, ex and its expectations. The consulate was finally established in a suburb of Saint-Denis one year later in 1986. Most of the consuls who have been posted in La Réunion have saluted the dynamism uh, of the Indian community uh, and an enthusiasm that could be measured by the number of by the number of cultural events organized in many cities over the, over the island. On another hand, the consulate proved beneficial for the Indian diaspora. Before its creation, Indian artists would come to Mauritius and then leave from 1986. La Réunion was also included in their circuit and people had the opportunity to attend concerts of renowned, of renowned Indian artists artists at home. The presence of an Indian consulate also contributed to the popularity of diaspora celebrations, whether Hindu or Muslims, whether Hindu or Muslim, sorry. The consulate was associated to these events, giving them a translocal and international dimension. These celebrations constituted occasions, occasions sorry, to acknowledge the vigor of the diaspora. And though La Réunion remains unknown to many in India, the consulate contributed to the participation of some Réunionese artists to festivals in India in the last decades. The consulate has also fulfilled its role in facilitating the procedures for travelers to India. Visa delivery has no off-season, and members of the diaspora have been visiting the country either on pilgrimage tours in the land of ancestors or on a regular basis. Uh, Le Gambal Suprayan Kavri says that the setting up of an Indian consulate was one of the first demands made by the Fédération des Associations Tamoul, since the wish to reconnect with their own history was essential to people of her parents' generation and to her own. It was necessary to make Indian priests come and take charge of temples in La Réunion. People also felt the need to travel to the land of their ancestors. The first trip was generally an experience of a lifetime. Travelers were likely to feel that they had come full circle, that they could finally connect with their lowest roots. Organized tours allowed the community to discover aspects of the Indian culture that were new to them. Uh, they could learn about new forms of dances uh, or rediscover the Indian culinary heritage, etc. To a certain extent, the possibility to travel to places that were meaningful to members of the community seemed to be the culmination after almost two decades of the revival of the Indian culture on the island. On a symbolic level, the placing of a headstone by Sudel Fuma and others in Pondicherry in 2010, commemorated the immigration of Indian slaves and indentured workers from South India, and acknowledged the contribution of these thousands of people who crossed the Kalapani uh, to the history of La Réunion. Uh, Julien Ramet said, uh, I quote, uh, that for almost all Réunionese people, uh, we have an Indian part in us, uh, end of quote. Two decades earlier, the city of Saint-Denis also wanted to make this heritage known in a different way. Through the organization of an India Week, a uh, Semaine de l'Inde, uh, in the early 1990s, uh, Gilles Beranet, then mayor of the capital city of La Réunion, uh, and different cultural Indian associations wanted to open a gateway to Indian traditional and modern culture. Through exhibitions, conferences, concerts, the aim was also to represent the diversity of this culture in which all Réunionese people could find themselves. Salesmen and artists from different regions of the subcontinent were present 
on different sites of Saint-Denis, mainly at the Parc des Expositions, but also at the Théâtre de Chanfleury. The whole city, and in a way the whole island, vibrated to the sounds and atmosphere of India for a week, with the possibility to dress with Indian attires, to eat regional, regional specialties of Indian cuisine, and to listen to music from South India, as well as ghazals, etc. Hena workshops, lectures on Indian spiritualities, Ayurvedic medicine consultations, etc., formed parts of this week's activities. Famous artists like Pankaj Das, etc., were invited to perform. Gilbert Annette acknowledges his Indian ancestry and explains, and explains that it seemed necessary to put in the light what he calls another, another path to a uh, reunionese identity. The municipality worked hand in hand with diverse associations to set up this big event, which was a success. Not only people directly linked to an Indian ancestry, uh, but also people from different backgrounds showed a real interest in discovering or rediscovering this country and its cultures. This event took place in the, in the wake of the setting up of the consulate, and it happened at a time when initiatives towards the revival, the revival of the Indian heritage, was gaining momentum in La Réunion. There is no denying that this exposure to Indian culture finally proved decisive for many who then took the plunge and paid a visit to the country of their ancestors. It is possible to conclude by stating that members of the Indian diaspora in La Réunion had to deal with an inevitable loss of their roots. However, this did not result in cultural obliteration. On the contrary, elders uh, were aware of the uprooting linked to migration and they strove to preserve and transmit their knowledge, traditions and culture. The possibility to go back and visit the country of their ancestors undoubtedly marked a turning point in the lives of many. It also opened the path to reconsidering the legacy. On another hand, the history of this community and the history of its quest is linked to the history of La Réunion. Through its events, its performances, it is part of the island's cultural heritage. It has been acknowledged and adopted by members of other communities. And it can be considered that its destiny is intimately linked to the cultural ecosystem that is La Réunion. I thank you for your attention. Thank you.